His cattle didn't get a bit. Mind you, they were fairly bloody poor. What was he going to do? You know, he couldn't feed them anymore. The dams were all but dry. Hay was 13 bucks a bale. And last month's talk of rain was just a fairy tale. His credit had run out, no chance to pay what's owed. Bad thoughts ran through his head as he drove down Gully Road. Gee, his great granddad bought the place back in 1898. Now I'm such a useless bastard, I'll have to shut the gate. I can't feed my wife and kids. Not like dad and those before. Crocky's his grandma kept it going while Pop fought in the war. With depression now his master, he abandoned what was right. He thought there's no place in life for failure. It ended all tonight. Oh, there's still some things to do. He'd have to shoot the cattle first. Of all the jobs he'd ever done, you know, that'd be the worst. Then he'd shower, watch the news, they'd all sit down for tea. Read his kids a bedtime story and watch some more TV. Kiss his wife goodnight. Say he was off to shoot some ruse. Then in a paddock far away, he'd blow away the blues. But he drove in the gate and stopped, as he always had to check the roadside mailbox. And he found a letter from his dad. Now his dad was not a writer, mum did all the cards and mail. But he knew the writing from the notebooks that he kept from cattle sales. He sensed the nature of its contents. He felt the moisture in his eyes. Just the fact his dad had written was enough to make him cry. Son, I know it's bloody tough. It's a cruel and twisted game, this life upon the land when you're screaming out for rain. There's no candle in the darkness. Not a single speck of light, but mate, don't let the demon get you. You have to do what's right. I don't know what's in your head, but push the nasty thoughts away. So you'll always have your family at the back end of the day. You have to talk to someone and, yeah, mate, I know I really did. You've got to think about Fiona and, and think about the kids. See, I'm worried about your son. You haven't phoned for quite a while. And I know the road you're on, old mate, because Jesus, I've walked every bloody mile. The date, December 7, back in 1983. Behind the shed, I had the shotgun rested by the Brigalow tree, so I borrowed way too much to buy the Johnson place. It didn't rain for years. We got bombed by interest rates. The bank was at the door. I didn't think I had a choice. I began to squeeze the trigger. And that's when I heard your voice. You said, where are you, Daddy? It's time to play our game. I've got squatter all set up. You know, we might get general rain. You really was that close. You're the one that stopped me, son. And you're the one that taught me there's no answer in a gun. Just remember people love you. Good mates won't let you down. Look, you might have to swallow pride and take that job in town just till things come good. You've always got a choice. And when you get this letter, ring me, mate, because, geez, I'd love to hear your voice. Well, he cried and laughed and shook his head and he put the truck in gear, shut his eyes and hugged his dad in a vision that was clear. He dropped the cattle at the yards. He put the truck away. He filled the troughs the best he could and fed his last 10 bales of hay. Then he strode towards the homestead, shoulders back, head held high. Oh, he still knew the road was tough. But now there was a purpose in his eye. He called his wife and children who'd lived through all his pain. Hugs said more than words. He'd come back to them again. Then they spoke of silver linings and how good times always follow bad. Then he walked towards the phone and he picked it up and he rang his dad. And as his kids set up the squatter, he hugged his wife again. Then they heard the roll of thunder and they smelt the smell of rain.